Sewing friends, I'm Karina. This is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel all about sewing. Thank you for all your wonderful feedback on my cielo tops that I've shown the other day. I'm wearing one of those today. I actually wore this out yesterday as well. I think it was one of the first things I really wanted to wear outside uh, just because it's got red, you know. But I love all the tops and I really can't pick a favorite <laughs> at the moment. Today I want to show you the Pietra pants trousers which is also part of the rom collection of closet case patterns these are a trio of patterns that were sold in a bundle when they were just released uh, with a 20 percent off so it was quite quite cost effective to get them all together and especially because i had a gift card so i only had to pay a difference of the total cost i did have to pay a difference but it wasn't much so i thought you know i'm gonna give these a go to be honest, this is the pattern that mostly caught my attention when I was looking at the trio of patterns. Something caught to me with the pockets. But basically the features of this, these pants are that they are high-waisted. They have a thick sort of facing inside like a waist day. But at the back, they have an elasticated back with another waistband and a two-inch elastic. The front part of the pants are divided in two. And within one of those side panels is that there is an angled pocket. I like these types of pockets because I think they don't create bulk to the hips. You've seen me talk against pockets and basically I don't like pockets on dresses or skirts. The ones that go into the, you know, on the side seam that they dangle inside and touch your legs on the inside. Those are the pockets I don't like. But these types of pockets, and especially on trousers, I do find really interesting, you know. Not that I'll ever put anything in a pocket, <laughs> you know, like I don't put things in pockets. But as a visual thing, I think that they look really cool. There are three views in this pattern. View A has a really wide leg, view B has a slim leg cropped, and view C is shorts. Uh, sort of white is short, quite short as well. The fabrics they recommend are all woven, chambray, linen, denim, twill, tensile, that sort of, I would say, medium weight, bottom weight wovens. The sizing for this pattern comes from US size 0 to 20 with a waist of 24 to 39 inches and hips of 33 to 48 inches. At the waist, there is one inch of positive ease. Once it's finished and the elastic is put in prior to the back elastic, I think the waist is quite huge. <laughs> but it, comfort wise, you have an inch to play with at the waist. Depends on the view that you've chosen is the amount of positive ease you're gonna have around the hips. So view A, which is the wider one, has two and a half inches of positive ease around the hips. View B, which is the slimmer one, the one I chose, has one and a half inches of positive ease around the hips. And view C, which are the shorts, they have more positive ease at the hips, five inches there. For my projects, I'm making view B and view C, so the slim leg and the shorts. And for both, I've chosen linen, one in a plain color red and the other one in a printed linen. So in Up Close and So Personal, you're going to see very basic layout of my pants, the red ones, some feet adjustments. Regarding the shorts, I think they are very short for me at least. Four inches of inseam is very short for me. I like 10 inches of inseam, that is what I like. So you're going to see how I modified the pattern to achieve that length, still keeping the shape, you know, everything perfect and having what I want, which is just longer length. So let's hop into up close and so personal. I'm not used to making a pair of pants with so much fabric. Two and 25 meters for a pair of pants is a lot. I managed to make it in less. So there is my fabric, my back waistband on the fold, my back leg, one of the front legs, the other front leg is like the other direction, the pocket and the two facing pieces that go in the front. And I only had two meters of fabric and you can see I've made it out of 170 and I have that chunk left over for something else. Now, the way these pants are made means that you can't try them on to the very end so it's impossible to try on you just hope for the best I, I do need to make some adjustments here you can see a picture where you see I've got excess fabric at the hips and in the inner thigh the crotch is very low excess fabric on the front the waist is so high I really can't do anything about that so I'm going to fix what I can I put the pants inside out and just below the back waistband is you know where I can get into sewing I'm going to take in about three-eighths of an inch at the hip and then taper to nothing at the, at the 
side of, of the pants and do that on both sides and that gives me a little bit better fit around the hips and the bottom now on the inner thigh I had a lot of excess so at the top of the crotch there I've if you can see I've raised the, that line of chalk about three eighths of an inch and then started tapering in on the inner thigh and I'm gonna take some excess fabric there. I have already pinned and noticed that this is what's gonna give a better result. For the shorts, I'm just gonna go down one whole size to a 14 instead of making changes to the 16. The original shorts have a four inch inseam and I find that super short for me. I'd like my inseam at 10 inches at least, so I need to add six more in length. But before that, I found the red pants extremely high-waisted for me. I'm not used to wearing pants that high up. So on all the pattern pieces, I've just drawn a, a line on the top at two centimeters that I'm gonna cut away. That'll just drop the waistline a little, just where I want it to be lower. So there's three pattern pieces for the pants and the two facings, and I've done that modification to all the tops of all the pieces, and then the construction will be all the same. Now to lengthen these, there is no shorten and lengthen line on the leg. The lines that they have are on the crotch. So I've just measured from the bottom of the shorts an amount that I determined just because I wanted to at 10 centimeters or 4 inches. So from the bottom I measured 4 inches and just drew a line across, separated all these pattern pieces. In between there I've added the 6 inches. Now I'm careful to keep the grain line from the top part of the pants with the bottom piece. You can see that the grain line keeps going in the same direction for all the pieces and I drew out the sides there. You see that little pointy bit there is low. I have to get rid of that. That middle panel is easy. You just have those straight lines there and on that side you also get that pointy bit that was down there. You have to eliminate that. So very easy to do. So here you can see it all cleaned up, my pattern piece is ready to be cut and put on fabric. The pocket piece is actually quite big and takes up a lot of fabric, so I've divided that pocket piece into two pieces. I just cut the piece there and cut partially some out of the main fabric, which is the part that's going to be visible on the shorts, and then another out of white linen. So I just attach these together and you can see this pocket assembled on the inside where you've got the contrast linen that no one can see. When I turn this around there is that seam that I made to add on that extra piece that is not visible to anyone but the top part of the pocket piece that is visible is made out of the main fabric. And you can see that the main fabric goes way beyond the pocket opening, so no one's going to know that I've done this to save some fabric. Now, with the cielo tops, you probably saw that I didn't show much sewing or construction, and I won't be showing that for any of these trio of patterns. And that is because Closet Case has us as like a class that you can purchase where all that is included, and I don't want to like step over that and show you things that might prevent you from purchasing that if that is what you think you need if you're a beginner and you want to learn like you know uh, step by step so that's why I'm not showing like sewing but these are very simple patterns very easy to do if you have a bit of experience already and I just wanted to explain why I'm not showing you like the sewing parts mostly these are the angled pockets that I really like there is a pocket piece there that has been understitched inside so that it stays in and I'm going to turn this inside out so you can see on the inside but I think it's really cool so this side panel of the legs comes up to here and what you see on this part is actually the pocket piece that comes behind and completes that front panel that is then attached to that one so then you have your full front piece really fun to make really fun to construct and at the back you have your elastic back quite a wide elastic two inches really hard to find i had a remnant a little piece that was just enough for this it's a really good quality elastic it's quite thick it's not the type that will flop and fold inside and any of that nonsense so that's why i didn't top stitch this i actually prefer it like this i don't prefer like when you sew several rows to hold the elastic in but sometimes that is necessary let me turn this around and show you inside so there's this big facing inside that is shaped there's three pieces of facing there that are turned under and understitched. If you can see, they are interfaced. I have actually read 
interfacing. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> and I bound that edge of the facing with leftover chiffon bias tape that I'd made for another project. That's just a detail for me. At the back, you can see the waistband and how this is, this is finished really clean there. If you can see like the waistband to this part there. And inside here, you can see how the pockets are folded. So the pocket piece folds up on the top and then completes that part on the front. It's everything's clearly explained in notches and fold lines and on the pattern piece and everything. And this is the area of this pattern that was not intuitive to me at all. I'm looking at this and I'm like, what? <laughs> And I'm not used to reading instructions. You probably know that about me. I usually grab a pattern, look at the notches, look at the pieces and just start making things. But I really needed to look at the instructions for this. I was really confused with the instructions because they have all the views uh, in the same instructions. So I'm just making up here because I don't remember the letters. <laughs> Say you're making the shorts and your pocket is B, and but the pocket for the view A and C is called C and D. And it was all like C, D, F, and I, oh, this just really confused me. Like, yeah, it really confused me. <laughs> the other thing that confused me was uh, the colors they chose to use on the diagrams. So for the right side of the fabric, they had white, and for the wrong side of the fabric, they have gray. And depends on what pattern you've been working prior to that is what you have like stuck in your brain so there are other pattern companies that use the inverse so for the right side of the fabric they use the gray and for the wrong side of the fabric they use the white and I suppose neither is right or wrong I had a look at several pattern companies that I have in my disk you know in my hard drive and I could see like several used either or so you know if you've been working prior to this on a pattern that does the inverse then it can really trick you so yeah <laughs> I had to do a double take and look at that and just like repeat it in my mind the white is the right side and the gray is the wrong side and that was really important to be able to figure out how to make this pocket not hard not hard at all that was just my thing because I'd been working on a pattern like an hour before that had the thing on the inverse you know <laughs> Anyway, you saw that these pants are big. Uh, they are, I chose a size 16 based on my measurements. I knew these were high-waisted, but unless I made them, I really wasn't going to be sure how high-waisted they were. They turned out really big. Like I had too much room everywhere uh, for the ease that I like to wear in pants. You know, ease is a personal preference. Someone might be super happy with the original ease of the pants but for me I found them really big so I did the adjustments I could on these you know because I want to wear them <laughs> here you see them on and you see that the rise is super high for me and the crotch is a bit low you can see me pointing at my natural waist now they are really high waisted I'm not used to that here are the pockets on the side I think the pockets have a good depth if you wanted to put things in there I would never put anything in there they were for me they're just decorative from far away you can see the length and the fit around the hips this is an acceptable fit after i made the adjustments but still i am not 100 percent happy with it you can see how when i walk you have that extra length there on the front and that is not something you can fix after the fact you know um yeah i'm fiddling with the pockets again because why not <laughs> here you can see the back how high it comes up on me the elastic at the back it does give good shaping for your bottom that is as much as i'm comfortable to show my bottom there <laughs> um yeah i i definitely need these to come lower and that is why you saw an up close and so personal i did lower that with the shorts version don't you think this is starting to So usually if I've made adjustments by pinning on myself and feeding to myself on a pattern, I would usually transfer those 
adjustments onto pattern piece so that I can have them ready for when I make the garment again. In this case, I knew that what I made was just to make them wearable, but I knew that the, <laughs> I just knew I needed to drop down a size basically. So I didn't really transfer those marks onto my pattern piece. So for the shorts, instead of printing out a size 16, I printed out a size 14, made the adjustment of dropping it down two centimeters. I think that length is as high waisted as I'm comfortable to wear. And because it was a smaller size, the rise was different and the fit was perfect. Like I made absolutely no adjustments to the size 14 in the shorts. And I love this fabric. This fabric is a printed linen I got on my 40th, you know, birthday fabric haul. <laughs> that my husband you know treated me to to you know like mitigate the pain of being 40 <laughs> I'm over it now I mean I'm fine I'm 40 but at, in that period I'd been so down like leading up to it and on the day I turned 40 I went and chose this colorful beautiful linen print with a coral background and black and white huge leaves so I really like this uh, and I only had a meter. You saw that I did some fabric saving, you know, tricks on the pocket piece and it looks the same. So this area of the pocket that is visible to the outside, I did cut a piece out of the main fabric as you saw. And when you peek inside, below, you know, the pocket entrance there, way below there starts the contrast white. And then here you have the contrast white linen and the stitch there so no one's ever gonna know and I was able to get my lengthened shorts out of a meter. So they're exactly the same. Now the difference I made with these is that I did do, do a few rows of stitching to hold this elastic. I didn't have the same elastic as I used for the red pair. That was a much better quality elastic. This elastic sucks. <laughs> it's thin, it like flips and flops and folds and you can't just have it in there. So I did actually have to do that because of the quality of the elastic I had on hand. I live in a rural area. I can't just go over and buy more elastic. Um, and if I wanna make a project now, I have to make do with what I have. So that is my solution to <laughs> bad quality elastic. I mean, it's not bad, bad. It's just not as good as the other one that stands up and is like stiffer and it won't move around. You know, this one, yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna turn this around so you can see. Now, because the linen is coral, I sew with coral thread. So it does stand out. The, on the other side, it's white. But I do prioritize how it's gonna look on the outside. And if you can see seams, I want coral there, I don't want white, you know, that's just how I do it. <laughs> there is the back and here on the front is where I attached uh, the main fabric to the white linen there to have that pocket be white inside and to make the shorts with less fabric. If I'd made the huge pocket piece out of the main, I wouldn't have been able to make these shorts. I did not have enough fabric for that. I interfaced this with white and I also used leftover bias tape I made in chiffon with coral and I've used this bias tape for a lot of projects. I made it initially for a blouse and then I had yards left over and I've been using it and I've still got some left. And I love bias binding with chiffon because it's it doesn't create any bulk at all. It's super nice, um, nice and clean and not bulky. Here you can see the shorts on. Look at that length. That is exactly the length I want, just above the knee. I'm really comfortable to wear shorts in this length. You can see up close, the waist is at the height that I love. That waist day inside is brilliant. Keeps your tummy really well supported. There are the pockets. And at the back, you can see the shape of the bottom is perfect with the size 14. There you can see my elastic there. And yeah, these are the perfect shorts for me. Um, I can see myself making many, many more of these, especially in this length. I'm glad I took the time to lengthen them and make that adjustment very easy to make. And yeah, I just really, really like these shorts. The fit of the bottom is perfect. I'm happy with them.
that is what I wanted to share. I hope the information I provided was useful. If you're planning to make this pattern and have been thinking about it, I have these two versions. I love them in linen. I love this one more than this one because of the fit. I like the fit better on this one that is like the correct size for me. Now, would you undo part of this to fix it? So I was thinking about this last night because I am sort of happy to wear them as they are. You know, like I'm happy to wear them. The only issue that I feel that is uncomfortable for me is the high waist bit. I'm not used to having fabric so up there. Uh, it's just my thing. So in order to fix that, I would have to do major unpicking. Um, I would have to do undo part of this side seam. I would have to undo the whole facing from the top. And the facings are sort of top stitched down there um, in the ditch right there to hold them down. So I would have to unsew that. And I would have to rip out the waistband, cut the two centimeters, you know, you know, do the whole thing. Would you, would you do it to have pants that you're really, really happy with rather than just being happy with them? I'm happy with these. I would like to be really, really happy with them. So I think I'm gonna keep them in a pile. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear them. But one day if I'm inspired while I'm watching a movie, I'm gonna go and unstitch and redo the top bit so that they can fit close to how the coral ones fit on the top. Um, because I love red, I love these, you know, like I love the pants in red linen. I think they can go with a lot of things that I wear, like this top, as you saw in the pictures. Um, so yeah, let me know, let me know if you would do that. You, you know I would do that, um, but would you? <laughs> I'm just interested to know. Sometimes unpicking, you know, is not fun. But if you're distracted, doing something else, I'm quite happy to do it and do this top part again so that I can have something I'm really proud to wear and really comfortable and it fits like I want it to fit, you know? Let me know. Thank you so much for watching. The next video is gonna be about the Fiore skirt. I've made two versions and I'm really excited to show you those. So keep your eyes peeled for those. Please subscribe, like, and share. And I will see you very soon. Bye. Don't you think this is